Mr. Secretary General, welcome to High Talk on CGTN. Thank you. Talk to me about this high-level delegation you're leading this time in China. You're in Beijing. I understand it will also take you to Chengdu. What will be the aim of this trip? Well, thank you very much. Uh, my delegation and I came to Beijing by the invitation of the CPC, and we have come to do two things. Number one is um, to sign a memorandum of understanding between my party, the SPLM, and the CPC. Number two is for my delegation, especially governors who are the chairpersons of my party in various states of South Sudan, to come and learn for themselves how poverty is elevated in some of the areas that are dealing with poverty in China. We need to have those skills and those experience for us to go back home and try to apply them. CPC and your party SPLM have cooperated before. And can you shed light on what goes into that agreement, that memorandum of understanding this time? And how would you evaluate cooperation so far between these two parties? The SPLM and CPC have cooperated in a number of areas. One is in physical infrastructural development. Uh, we have a road now which is uh, being built by Shandong High Speed from Juba all the way to Rumbek. Uh, there is also renovation of Juba Teaching Hospital uh, by Chinese companies. Uh, there, are, there are also cooperations in uh, building schools. Uh, our hope is that as we sign the new mem memorandum of understanding, we will have to scale up more cooperation among ourselves because we have become strategic partners at this level. South Sudan fought long and hard to become an independent country. Um, but over the last 11, 12 years since its independence, it's also had its fair share of challenges and difficulties. Um, can you share with us the major obstacles and challenges South Sudan is facing right now and what plans are in place to address these critical issues? We're facing two major challenges. One is the conflict, which is the war that happened in the country in, in 2013 and to address that we, we went through uh, peace agreements and at the moment there is stability and peace in our country as we are implementing the agreement. Uh, the other challenge is natural disaster. Uh, we now have uh, floods that are uh, coming to South Sudan and destroying many villages and many counties and most of the people are displaced in those places where the rains have fallen. Uh, that is a part of the climate change. And, and so in terms of humanitarian, the CPC has been sending assistance uh, to the government of South Sudan to assist uh, those displaced people. But I think in the future we have to think about how we are going to mitigate uh, these kinds of natural disasters. I mean, in now that we're on the topic of peace, for outsiders looking in, they're interested in how the extension of 24 months will mean for the peace process in South Sudan. Can you share with us the sentiment in the country towards this extension and what is being implemented to meet the deadline? What brought about the extension has been the difficulty to implement the peace agreement in a short time because there are some provisions in the peace agreement which are very difficult and require international, uh, international assistance. Uh, for example, when we talk about the security arrangement, which is chapter two of the agreement, uh, it requires retraining of the rebel forces, uh, com combining them together with the government forces, and then providing them with arms. Now the training of the first batch has been completed, but we don't have the weapons because uh, the Western world has imposed arms embargo on South Sudan. So this has been one of the issues which, which, which has uh, actually impacted on the parties to the agreement to extend for the next 24 months so that it gives time uh, for us to complete the rest of the uh, chapters of the agreement. We believe that in 2024, December, there will be an election in which the uh, government of South Sudan will, will have to emerge from, from that election. Are you confident the election will be held on time come December 2024? There will not be another extension as far as I know. Uh, 
I came here to Beijing coming from, from grassroots area where we were doing our party registration and mobilization. And so we are already preparing the ground for that as political parties. And we are hopeful that uh, by that time they, we will all be ready for elections to take place. Obviously, part of your trip this time is about tapping into the potential between the two parties when it comes to cooperation. Given what we've seen in the cooperation mechanism already established between the two parties, um, where does that potential lie? I think the, the potential is, lies in the fact that um, we see a brighter future uh, to fit into the uh, the program that is called the uh, uh, Global Development Program, uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, uh, the uh, the Global Security. So, so all of this, we want to see South Sudan benefit from this, and also how South Sudan can contribute to this. Why don't we spend some time with the Belt and Road Initiative just now? South Sudan has been an important partner to this initiative proposed by China. Is it going to be expanded into more sectors? Are we talking about uh, more investments? How, how do they expand here? We're expecting to expand the road development, uh, especially road construction in the country. Uh, it, it would also involve railway networks. It will also involve uh, river transports. We have many rivers in South Sudan. We are also expecting to invest in the electric city system because at the moment um, we are using generators. We, 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 we would like to invest in the hydroelectric power, which is more reliable and more environmental friendly. And we would also expand our education system where we would like to build more universities, more, more technical schools. I do want to end on China-Africa um, relations here. I mean, China, obviously the largest developing country, Africa, the continent with the most number of developing countries here, China and South Sudan, um, and other African countries are trying to join hands to build a high-level China-Africa community with a shared future. When you hear this concept, can you share with us your understanding of the vision? You know, for, for African continent, we, we liberated ourselves from, uh, from oppressive colonial systems. Our desire is to transform our li the lives of our people for better. And it has been almost impossible for the last so many years, maybe around 30 or even 40 years. Um, but uh, our cooperation with China has been based on how do we help the African people come out of this backwardness and be together with the rest of the world. Uh, we have seen China as a true partner for us, uh, working together to uplift the people of Africa out of poverty. Uh, that is a kind of cooperation that we would want to see. Uh, what, what we have experienced with others is that uh, they come with the prescribed uh, development model that might have worked with them and they want you to use it or otherwise if you don't use it then there is no reason for you to do any other thing. Uh, and, and so for us our uh, relationship as defined with, uh, by, by FOCAG I think will continue into the near future because we are all uh, sharing and benefiting uh, together. And it is our hope that your trip this time in China will mark another important step towards that goal of a more modern, prosperous future for South Sudan. Mr. Secretary General, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Thank, thank, you. thank you so much. Thank you.